Michael, you know, when we talked a few weeks ago, you know, some of the things that we talked about is, is your experience and your experience using uh, Seven Signal, and we're introducing more integration capabilities with our with our platform and and some of the user experience. My favorite thing is the integration and how it gets into the rest of your the rest of your environment. So tell us a little bit of how, how the technology that you're using with us and with other they integrate together. Yeah, very good, Ted. So um, we have an interesting environment. We have a lot of different uh, use cases and a lot of different uh, workloads that we have to support. So um, about 60% of my network is dormitories, which are occupied 24 by seven for 10 weeks every quarter and or 11. And, uh, and then there are breaks, but we're, we're trying to serve a use case that's a little different from the main campus. And we also, another difference between that, that dormitory campus requirement is that uh, we have different support chains that are looking after those uh, customers. So in the case of all of the dormitories, the tickets flow through a, a residential network service team and that's mostly populated by students who are employed by that organization uh, for campus networking you know eight by five that's more going through the regular help desk which is full-time employees and so one of the things for us is that we need tools that will help each of those different technical teams be successful in what they're required to do so the uh the typical kind of issues we get out in the dormitories are things like connectivity problems um people are struggling to get their device to connect is it a device issue or is it an infrastructure issue and so the mobile eye visibility to their uh, signal experience to their um, throughput is going to help that frontline help desk be successful now you could go with niantza you could go with dnac you could go with all of those other tools of spectrum analyzer but none of the students that we employ are going to be able to use those tools. And so the huge advantage that we find the seven signal is that it, it's, it's really usable at different tiers of the support hierarchy. It has a value at tier one, a value at tier two, a value at tier three, different kinds of tickets. When the tickets finally get escalated to my team out of the residential area, it's more likely a coverage issue or a compatibility issue. But once we learn about driver compatibility problems and, and you know, kudos to mobile life are telling us the driver versions, that's hugely valuable. Uh, we can then push that knowledge down to the tier one people and they can start handling those issues directly because they have enough skill to use that tool to investigate what they need. And they, so there's the, the three use cases that I would say that we mostly apply mobile eye is uh, troubleshooting tickets, optimizing our network, and also educating the, the, the techs so that they can get better. If they have a chance to use Seven Signal and look at how things are working in their in their lab in their office, they're going to get better at handling customer tickets. So we have this ongoing education uh, just through the the amount of visibility that's available through the tool. Uh, optimization is an interesting topic. We could get into that in a moment if you like. Um, but from the troubleshooting standpoint, it's the it's the flexibility of information that really helps us troubleshoot connectivity at one level and uh, performance and, and compatibility issues at another level. Yeah, the, um, the items that we could, you know, I'm highly confident that you talk about the tier three, tier two, tier one um, support uh, and having different skill sets and probably in each of those, into those roles. I'm very confident that some of the things that Simon talked about later this year is gonna help improve that. So you're you're talking about not only you just mentioned the word optimize, but not only mentioned the optimize of the of the software or the application, but maybe since you brought it up, um, I'll pu I'll push you in that direction a little bit. Is tell me a little bit, bit more about the optimize and how you feel it, it helps optimize what you're what you're either working on or the efficiency of the, of the network itself. Right. So that, that's an interesting topic that's been growing for us over the last year. I mean, obviously, with the pandemic, we've had a change in our requirements. We had students on campus in their dormitory networks. And, <clears throat> you know, previously, we essentially operated as an ISP. They would have access to web services. Uh, they would have access to gaming. They'd be living in the dorms, but they'd be studying on campus. And with pandemic, they've been forced to get onto everything in Zoom in those dormitory networks. They were never designed for interactive voice and video. And so we had to investigate a lot of complaints that Zoom isn't working from X building 
we have 700 buildings on campus about again about 60 percent of that is dormitories um all of those locations have different construction materials they have different uh ap models there's the very varying environment students come in with a little nano device uh students come in with an ax210 chip and it's hugely variable what the client experience is going to be like so helping understand the client experience um gets us to a better understanding of where those issues are coming from. Now, when we get a, a set of complaints at a particular dorm and we know a refresh is coming, we want to investigate the information to help guide our redeployment as best we can. If we want to, we want to detect where those coverage holes are. And so knowing a little bit about client experience will help us redesign that network. That's what I mean by optimization. And we've been getting a lot of pressure this last year to say, you know, we're getting complaints from College 9. What can we do about improving the service there? Well, we've got to find out, is it a trunking issue? Is it a coverage issue? Is it client issues? Is it just uh, because we're running 2602s and we're on Wi-Fi 4? Um, so the, the seven signal visibility is through the mobile eye, but also through the Sapphire eyes, because what we'll do is we'll take Sapphire eyes out into those problem hotspots and we'll leave them there for a while. And we'll just monitor what's going on, get a handle on whether there's congestion, whether there's interference. I mean, yes, 2.4 gets pretty busy, but is it really an issue? It depends on the application. Some of them are successful to, to cope and some of them don't. Uh, if you've got constant video streaming, as, as Tony mentioned, um, that's definitely going to cause a problem in that space. But uh, just having a lot of rogues doesn't necessarily mean you've got problems. Okay. So it, it's information visibility, helping us understand what's the real experience like and then making good investment decisions on our troubleshooting and our, our refresh planning connected to that. Yeah, so interesting you say that, but you mentioned rogues, and rogues aren't really your your biggest concern. It's more about um, optimizing or getting that level of service to, to where each of the students can use it, it sounds like. And, and service is the key word, right? We, we use ACIPS as our ping monitoring solution. We're constantly pinging all the APs. We know they're up and running. We don't know what the service is like from the client point of view. Because even with DNAC, you just don't get good enough information out of that to help you understand service experience. I mean, I had a trunking issue just over this last weekend, which we discovered directly through Mobileye. Uh, we had a student who uh, brought a desktop to campus, uh, didn't get great experience. The Res ResNet people recommended, hey, get this AX200 module, put that in, you'll get better experience. He did. He was very happy with it for a couple of weeks. And then Sunday night, he raises a ticket saying, you know what? I've got great connection, but I'm getting one megabit throughput. What the hell's going on it, from eight o'clock to midnight, just after the Super Bowl? And uh, so we're checking into this trouble, this situation, trying to understand what's going on. And eventually we realize, oh, we've got this, this link that was planned to be upgraded from dual one gigabit lag connections to 10, hasn't been done yet, scheduled for another couple of weeks out, but it's hitting congestion issues. And once we, the, the mobile eye told us it's not a Wi Fi issue, it's a trunking issue and we could nail it. So now we're going ahead to fix that problem and we're gonna be improving service for a couple of hundred students in that building based on one student's mobile eye reports that actually pointed us in the right direction. That's great. And you know, an, an old peer of mine said, operate in the shadows. You know, a, a lot of what's happening here is, is exactly that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, there, one more little thing that you touched on earlier. I just wanna make sure we we don't forget the cover, but to the help desk itself, this is a student run organization or do you control it? Or do you have done those roles? You talked about the different roles and using the, the uh, seven signal platform, which roles use that platform, all three? So, so as, as is often the case, everything is driven by financial considerations. Um, the university is a combination of learning, research and, uh, and students. And the students are mostly funded through the housing organization. So the, the residential network, the investment funding comes out of the housing group that comes out of student uh, occupancy fees. We have about 10,000 students who live on campus. And then there's a whole another 8,000 that live off campus. So we serve the, the needs of the, the people on campus. Uh, that's all funded through housing. And so housing has its own help desk that we interact with. I'm part of an ITS organization that is funded out of the campus in general but housing has a specific area that it addresses. And that, that distinction is what creates this little bit of a gap. We partner up very effectively. We, we know we've got each other's backs, 
Um, but it's really important to get tools that they can use. And that's, that's where the, uh, so that's why I call them tier one. We're really tier three. We also have an internal help desk in ITS. <clears throat> They've been building their skill set too. Um, <clears throat> but we try to teach the lower tiers as much as possible how to handle more tickets. It's the only way we're going to scale. Yeah.